So this is going to be a little bit more of a rant style video. If that's not your thing, I totally understand. But some cool things happened recently. Clean had a podcast with Nikita and some titans of the gun world. And a lot of their conversation kind of intersected with a video that I was already in the process of making. So I wanted to share my thoughts on a few subjects. Uh, thank you for stopping by. I'm Jesse Kazam. I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. But with all that out of the way, let's just go ahead and dive right in. So like we said, Clean headed up a podcast on his channel with Nikita and a few kind of titans of the gun world, some really awesome people. You should A, definitely watch the podcast back and then definitely go check out all of those guys. But it was interesting. You know, the the purpose of it was kind of just to talk gear and equipment and Tarkov and 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 kind of how all that stuff intersects and not really about the, the development of the game, but... It kind of, of course, as always, you know, weaved in and out of some conversations like that and touched on some really important things. And like I said before, touched on, you know, a video that I was making about what I think Tarkov needs more than absolutely anything. And we'll get to that in a second. But I think we learned a lot uh, from Nikita, even in this podcast, not about Tarkov, but about Nikita and about BSG. There were moments where a lot of the guys, including Clean, was really heading up a conversation of saying, hey, make the game you want to make. Don't water it down for us. Don't water it down for anybody. You know, pull the rug out from us. Make sweeping changes. Like, like go in on your vision. It was, it was do what you want to do. And Nikita's response to that was so good. It really invoked a lot of leadership in that he wants to do that, but he also wants to make something that people enjoy and that he cares a lot about his staff and it's not just him receiving, you know, the hateful toxicity and stuff like that, but it's also his staff too. And it really just kind of brought back a layer of, because I think that same way. I'm like, dude, I want you to just make the game you want to make, and then I get to decide if I like it and not kind of mix everything up. And it really brought in the perspective of, you know, it's not just Nikita that makes this game. It's a whole lot of people and, and, you know, designing a game or designing something or designing features that ju then just get absolutely annihilated all over the internet. That's just not a super fun experience. That's not a super fun working environment. So he talked about how they are pushing towards the exact game they want to make, but they're pushing to it in a way that's, that's helpful and slow for the consumer and slower for the, uh, you know, designers as well. And I thought that that showed a lot of leadership from Nikita in understanding that he's responsible for his staff. And then through more conversation, you know, they, it was a lot of jokes and talks about like, don't read Reddit, don't look at the toxicity, don't read the negative comments. And as a content creator, I get that as well. You know, don't read the negative comments, just don't care about it, just don't worry about it. And Nikita immediately clapped back with, you know what I mean? No, it's the opposite. I get my favorite spoon and I just eat the crap and I sift through it because somewhere in there is something potentially real that somebody didn't have the words for or didn't know how to say and they responded emotionally and there could be something in there. And he talked a lot about how the community feedback has positively impacted the game quite a bit, even when it's represented in toxicity. And that it was in no way an excuse to be toxic or frustrating or mean-spirited or anything. But once again, I think it helped us peer into who Nikita is as a leader of this company and as a game designer and really helped at least me understand as somebody who does that on kind of like a small microcosm compared to what he does, just how good Nikita is and how much we really don't deserve him as a game dev on this project and their willingness to accept criticism um, and their willingness to sift through it, even if it's presented in the absolute worst way possible. And a lot of the conversation was centered around, you know, having, you know, providing solutions as well and how helpful that is for them. And that's kind of what brings me here and how that intersects with what I was making a video on, which was what I think Escape from Tarkov needs more than anything. And in my opinion, it's more of Nikita. It's more communication. It's more vision. And I know that that sounds like a lot, but I could tell from the chat, I could tell from all the guys that were on the podcast and in my own experience, every time Nikita's sitting there opening his mouth, talking about the game, we all get just as excited as we were when we first started playing the game, when we first started reading about features coming in the game, when we first started understanding that vision that Nikita had for the game, that excitement, that like absolute, like this is going to be the best game ever made. 
all of that starts to flood back when Nikita opens his mouth because you can tell how passionate he is about the project. You can tell how committed they are to his vision. I mean, he spent five, 10 minutes talking about how how much money they would make if they monetize the game, if they added microtransactions and how easy it would be for them to do that. But he's not going to do that on principle of he wants you to be able to buy this game and experience this game and have this game. And it really shows the passion and the commitment to this project. But here's where, you know, my small suggestion from where I sit as a content creator, as a streamer, and as somebody who plays this game, here's the rub. Here's the problem that I think I see is that we don't really know what the end of this journey is even supposed to look like what they want it to look like. Um, the people that do, the people that have the best understanding are people that, you know, crawl through breadcrumbs of forum posts and podcasts and things and, and blogs that have happened over the course of four to five years to kind of construct all these little nuggets, all these little things Nikita has said or alluded to. And then we kind of create this structure of what Tarkov's supposed to be. But we haven't really had Nikita walk through, you know, when the game is 1.0, what is that going to look like? You know, how are we going to get from A to B? What is what does the experience look like? And we know that some of the changes that have been alluded to that we don't really know if they're really going to happen or not could fundamentally change the game. You think about open world versus not open world. Those are two completely different games. You know, physicalized traders, they showed us models of therapists and proper is that that would completely change the game, having to go to a trader, buy your items, and then extract out of that raid with it. There are, and I, the, I, the list goes on. I could talk about a bunch of things that would fundamentally make this a completely different game at 1.0. And we haven't really had Nikita talk about, you know, what is this game going to be? What is the vision for this game as it stands right now? And because of that, it breeds a lot of confusion and a lot of different opinions and a lot of different tribes and stuff like that that form now i understand i'm not a game dev i understand that uh deadlines move and change features get cut things happen but this is kind of why i wanted to make this video and why i wanted to pose my solution is that the community for the most part the the vast majority of it really rally around nikita when he sits down and opens his mouth and talks about this game and talks about these things that are coming and i think a lot of times what happens is the time the precious time we get with nikita is oftentimes wasted asking questions that we ask a thousand times you know when is the wipe when is voip coming when is inertia coming we know those things are coming i want to know what is this game supposed to look like what is the economy supposed to look like? Are there going to be physicalized traders? Is there going to be open world? We know more about games that aren't out yet or aren't even playable. You know, we know what Star Citizen is supposed to look like at the end because they're very clear about that. We know what New World or Ashes of Creation is supposed to look like. And these games are, you know, some of these games are years away from being really playable. And we know exactly what they're supposed to look like. Now, like I said, I understand things changed. And I think Tarkov has changed quite a bit in even in its vision. But I think my solution is being being able to have bsg kind of communicate with us and for starters as a foundation tell us what as it currently stands what they want this game to be at 1.0 and that would clear up an infinite amount of confusion and you can decide if you like that or not but it would clear up confusion about what game we're playing and then they can just keep us in the loop on things like we are testing this for a specific reason we are moving this or we are cutting this feature I understand that I don't understand a lot. And I know that that sword cuts both ways and that the more you, you know, the more cards you put on the table and the more you show that could have negative consequences as well. Um, but I just thought that in the spirit of listening to what Nikita said, listening to how much he appreciates feedback, I felt like I wanted to be, you know, a voice of positivity, use my platform, use, you know, my opinions and provide something that simultaneously, you know, thanks Nikita and the BSG team for being so passionate about the game, for being a leader that's um, aware enough to say, hey, I might be OK with this, but I want to protect my staff. I want to protect the people that are around me. But at the same time, come in with a small bit of criticism and ask for that solution that if we knew what the vision of Escape from Tarkov was supposed to be as it stands today. And if you potentially spent a little bit more time walking us through not these same questions over and over again, not VoIP, not the wipe, but 
walking us through what the development looks like, why these features are getting pushed back, how important these features are, or whatever. I My guess, which it's just a guess, it's just my educated guess, is that the community would then have something to rally around. They talked in the podcast about how there's always going to be that 5 or 10% of people that you can't make happy no matter what, and they're always going to be toxic. In my view, doing this and communicating more just equips the other 90%. Because right now, we don't really know what to say to the toxic people because we don't really know what the game is supposed to be like. But the more that they can communicate with us, the more that we know the vision, the more that we understand the development and how things are going, it equips the other 90% of people who want to be positive about this game, who want to really move this game forward and be uh, willing participants in its development. It helps equip us with knowledge. Maybe I'm going to skip a wipe because I, you know, I don't like this specific feature. I'm going to provide more constructive feedback because I understand the, the thinking behind something. It helps us make more educated decisions and then mitigate that five to 10% of people that are just being toxic for no reason. So that's it. I have no direct line with Nikita or BSG. I don't know if anybody's going to see this video. I do not believe that my opinion holds any more weight than anybody else's. I'm not a shill out here just trying to blow smoke up Nikita's butt and tell him he's amazing. But at the same time, I'm not think I don't think this game is the worst thing that's ever happened either. What I want to do is use the platform I have, use my opinions as someone who's put thousands of hours into this game and try and respectfully thank Nikita and thank his team for making this game that's changed my life, many other people's lives that we all love to play, but at the same time offer some feedback and some criticism that may or may not be valuable at all. So if you liked this video, if you enjoyed these thoughts, and if you kind of agree with them, then you know maybe let's blow this video up, see if we can get it in front of somebody and, and maybe get a response or see what they think about this. Um, but I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below on if you feel like we have a good understanding of what Tarkov is supposed to be, or if you think you would benefit from learning a little bit more about what this game is supposed to look like upon full release. Um, you know, drop that down in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and watching this video. You know, drop a like if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel for more Tarkov content like this. Like we said before, I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch five or six days a week. All my links will be down below. And if you're looking for people to play Tarkov with, our Discord community is an awesome place to be. That link is down below as well. I'll link Clean's channel down below. Clean is, you know, a legend in the Tarkov community. If you haven't been by his stream, please check that link down below as well. Thank you again so much for stopping by, and I will definitely see y'all on the next one.